on a rainy night in Georgia, in the lobby of a Howard Johnson hotel, a gun battle plays out between a cop and two robbers. One bullet catches Detective Sam Guy in the femoral artery. The officer bleeds out on the floor. His assailants slip away. Sam Guy does not make it through the night. He is survived by his son, a fellow cop named David. Such a good man and uh, just so well liked and uh, he was sort of like the neighborhood hero everybody looked up to, you know, and especially when he became a policeman. Six months later, however, no one has come forward with any concrete information on the shooters. The bullets picked up at the crime scene have not been matched to any other crimes, and the case eventually goes cold. David Guy goes back on the street, locking up bad guys, waiting and hoping for the piece of information that will lead him to the men who killed his father. Down deep, I felt that maybe one day I would be able to be involved in the apprehension of these people. On September 29th, 1998, Atlanta detective Scott Bennett takes a phone call. At the other end of the line, a voice without a name, a woman who claims she knows who shot Sam Guy. I really felt like this was not some crackpot. This was somebody that knew what they were talking about. And she gave the name of Abner Wilkinson as being one of the, uh, well, one of the perpetrators and an individual that she knew only as TJ. Cold case detectives Jim Rose and Scott Bennett trace the call to Myrtle Wilkinson, Abner's estranged wife. Investigators sit down with Myrtle and ask her what she knows about the night Sam Guy was shot and killed. Can you tell us a little bit about that night? I saw it on television, on the news. But he told me before I saw it, he told me right after it happened, she said that after the crime had occurred, the morning after that her husband Abner had come home and had more or less told her about it, what had happened, and then told her, we're not going to talk about it anymore. For more than 20 years, Myrtle Wilkinson lived in fear of her husband and kept quiet about the murder. Now detectives push for details about her husband's accomplice, known only as TJ. And can you tell me the name of the person that was with him? Do you, do you know his full name? TJ. Just TJ? Mm -hmm. And she knew TJ only as TJ was somebody that her husband and that she socialized with from time to time. Myrtle Wilkinson's information is enough to get Sam Guy's case out of cold storage and back into play. The next step for detectives, a conversation with the victim's son. Their supervisor, um, Mickey Lloyd, called me and said, I just want you to know that something's happening on your dad's case. On the night his dad was killed, David Guy was an Atlanta cop. Now he is a recently retired Fulton County deputy sheriff. For 20 years, Guy worked his father's case. He compares notes with cold case detectives. I said, well, do you have any names? He said, well, yes, we, uh, Abner Wilkinson, and then all we have is initials, TJ. And I said, Terry Jackson. He said, TJ is Terry Robert Jackson. <laughs> Whoa, how do you know this? In 1982, David Guy and FBI Special Agent Arthur Krinsky developed an informant named Larry Smith. Like Myrtle Wilkinson, Smith claimed to know who pulled the trigger on Sam Guy. Like Myrtle, Smith fingered two men as the shooters, their names, Abner Wilkinson and Terry Jackson. It was basically the same as, as uh, the information we had initially in 82, so uh, I was certain at that time that they were on the right track. In 1982, Guy and Krinsky had Smith's statement, but not enough for a charge of murder. Nearly two decades later, cold case detectives promised to try again. What made me feel good was when I spoke with Detective Rose and Sergeant Bennett. I knew that they really wanted to solve this case for the family, you know. They really made it personal. Cold case detectives believe Wilkinson to be the more vulnerable of their two suspects more likely to feel the heat when looking at a possible murder charge. Abner had been arrested a few times, but there was no strong violence in his arrests. He was the one that was possibly the weaker of the two. So we decided to start with Abner. Rose and Bennett develop a strategy to scare Abner straight. They plant stories in his neighborhood about a couple of cops who want to talk about murder. 
I wanted his neighbors to go to him, and I wanted his friends to go to him, and I wanted his family members to go to him and tell him that the police department was looking for you. Out of the blue, he'd run into somebody that said, hey, these, these two Atlanta homicide cops were here asking questions about you. And in the end, it, it proved to be more than he could take. On September 17, 1999, the stories planted by cold case detectives pay off. Abner Wilkinson shows up at Atlanta PD headquarters with a suitcase in his hand, ready to tell all and go to jail. Yeah, so like, it seemed like they were like in hot pursuit. And I came to the conclusion that maybe I'll just go and get it off my chest. He had arrived carrying an overnight bag, so I think he knew that it was time to face the music and go ahead and put this thing behind him. In a police interview room, Wilkinson tells his tale. From the time he and Terry Jackson entered the Howard Johnson hotel lobby and announced their intention to rob the place. And we made the announcement. Uh, the officer got up and um, pulled his, his weapon. And he and I was, you know, you know I was ducking behind the pillows and, you know, shooting at, at each other. Wilkinson tells police he was armed with a 9mm, exchanging gunfire with Detective Guy. According to Wilkinson, however, it was Terry Jackson, armed with a 38, who hit Guy in the femoral artery and killed the officer. Mr. Jackson walked on through the lobby, you know, and uh, he came back and shot him in, you know, in the leg. You know, for no reason, he didn't like, shoot him like, you know, in a vital like you know, area, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, I'm hit bad, you know. But I didn't know it in that he was going to die. My feeling was, after spending most of the day with Abner, videotaping his story, talking to him, going over the finer points, and I really felt like we've got it. Now that's all that's left to do is go arrest Terry Jackson, which we did that night. Two hours later, Scott Bennett walks into a convenience store and places Terry Jackson under arrest for the murder of a police officer. Two months later, Terry Jackson stands trial. A jury finds him guilty. Jackson is sentenced to 25 years to life, bringing to a close the murder case of a police officer that lay cold for almost a quarter century. For the Atlanta Police Department, Sam Guy's memory far outstrips that. In honor of the slain officer, cold case detective Jim Rose wears Sam Guy's badge number. It's an honor to have such a great man's uh, badge number assigned to you, a man that was uh, well-loved on the police department by everybody, well-loved by his family, and uh, I'm proud every time I put it on. Abner Wilkinson is now 68 years old and serves his 12 years here in Hardwick, Georgia. I told Mr. Guy's family how sorry I was, and I wish that somehow they could find it to me, like in their heart, to me, like to forgive me for his demise and 